It's been a bit longer than I planned since my last video. I have been hoping to get a video published at least once every two weeks, but it's been five weeks now since I last posted one, so I'm a bit overdue. Apologies for that. Here I have a rare, interesting, and honestly excessively massive radio. This is the Sears Seek. It was sold as a kit by Sears in, I believe, the early 1960s. As you can probably kind of see from the front, it was a modular system. These modules could be rearranged as you saw fit, and I believe this has all four modules that they sold. It took several years of searching to turn this up. They're quite rare, and I think part of that is just the sheer size of it and the impracticality of it, but it is interesting. Here's the AM shortwave module, the amplifier module, the FM radio module, and the clock module, which is also the power supply. That was kind of an odd choice, in my opinion. They probably should have put the power supply in the amplifier module so that you didn't need to buy the clock, but I guess they wanted to try to sell more of the clocks. At a minimum, really, you need at least three modules to, to make a working radio. And if you're going to do that, you might as well go all in and get the uh, second radio module. This sort of cabinet and overall setup is more at home in the 1920s, although they generally would not have had a clock built in, and they certainly would not have had an FM tuner built in. But having uh, multiple dials like this across the front was very common in 1920s radios. Now to use either radio, you have to first turn on the power to them. And you can use this switch here, or have it triggered by the alarm, if you, for some crazy reason, wanted to use this giant thing as an alarm clock. There's a sleep control on the front here, in case you want to go to sleep listening to this thing. You can set that to up to 60 minutes if you want. There's only two numbers marked on there, though, so the time this thing will actually run for is probably a bit unpredictable. I'll just switch it on there. And then there's individual power switches for both the FM module and the AM module. And you select which one you want to get your audio source from. We'll start with the AM shortwave module. That's minimum volume right there. This thing definitely has a problem with ABC. I kind of did, honestly, not too much more than the minimum work to get this thing running again. I just don't really have a place to display it, so I uh, didn't go whole hog on this one. But I got it, you know, working enough to demonstrate. Have a 17th game and one last preseason game. Right? No, no, and, and we're going to go 18 and two. One full swoop at some right. point. It's yeah. going to go from 18 regular season to. Two. It uses a long wire antenna for both AM and shortwave. There's no ferrite rod in there, and it also has a headphones jack there. Two more features it has in common with 1920s radios. Alright, let's give the FM module a try. So first switch this over to FM and then turn on the FM module power. The FM radio uses this loop antenna here. Or you could hook up a dipole antenna or whatever else you want to hook up to. The sound quality in FM is pretty good. Tuning is a little funky though. I think it needs alignment. Another thing I have not done to this. It has an AFC option which you can turn on with this. Is 
<laughs> the AFC effect is not very strong, though. Yeah, it really doesn't do much. I think the AFC feature is actually just not working. Yeah, it's not doing anything. Alright, I'm going to unplug it and show you guys the back. I think that's the most interesting part of this, really. Alright, I've got this big heavy thing turned around and propped up on a box so we can get a good look at it. Over here on the left is the model 7493 combination clock and DC power supply. This is the knob for setting the time and setting the alarm. The original knob was missing, so I just put a suitable nut on there. That does the job. There's a circuit breaker up here in case you cause a short circuit in one of the many connections. And there's a chassis number and all that up there. Power goes from that to this model 7492 FM tuner. It lists the transistors there, but the part numbers are Sears part numbers, which is not super useful. This is the DC input, and then power is supplied by the DC output when you have the power switch turned on. Power from that goes to the 12 volt input on the amplifier module, which is a model 7491 and has three transistors inside it. It doesn't need to provide all that much amplification because these modules provide a fairly high level output, as you can probably guess from the earphones connector on the front. Similarly to the FM module, the model 7490 AM shortwave tuner can provide power via this wire to the amplifier, and its audio signal comes out here and goes in there. There's quite a few more cans on the surface here than you would find in your typical pocket-sized AM transistor radio, and they're also quite a bit bigger. These four cans here are for the AM and shortwave antenna and oscillator coils, and these are the IF transformers in the back here, these three. I believe it has five transistors. Yep, five transistors, as well as two diodes. I didn't have the ground connection hooked up. That would have probably improved performance a little bit. I also didn't demonstrate the shortwave function, but that doesn't work super well. It has a air dielectric metal tuning capacitor for both AM and shortwave. But the FM tuner uses a slug tuning system. And the tuning dial essentially pulls in that slug or lets it out. It's contained within this box. This thing was owned by a heavy smoker and a lot of the unit still has some tar condensed on it, like these transformers here. I cleaned off some of that tar, but it's just everywhere. I didn't go uh, crazy with it. I also didn't want to ruin the labels any more than they are already ruined. Here's where the FM antenna hooks up, and there's its audio output. It feeds into the corresponding connection here on the amplifier. And that has a decent sized speaker in there. And see the back of it. On the bottom here you can see the little nubs that serve as the feet for this thing. They originally had felt on them but that seems to have worn away. I should probably replace that. But I do plan to box this set up after I'm done with the video. I just don't have a spot to display it unfortunately. It would take up an entire shelf by itself. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at a rare, unusual, and commercially unsuccessful transistor radio kit produced by Sears.